Okay, well, this is a redo. I went back and looked at a video, one of my first ones, and there was a 10-minute segment during which time I recorded when I thought I wasn't, and I didn't record when I thought I was. Unfortunately, that data is lost, and it's sad because it was the visual and the um, um, water vapor that went along with the data. And it was on a um, last in, first out uh, stack. So as I added new data, I was deleting old, the oldest of the data. I've since upped my stack size from 1800 to 3000 frames per image. And um, so I have a while to play yet. Now, the interesting, so and I'm not sure how that cut is going to be. Uh, my audio may be interrupted and then just start up again and for the last couple of minutes of, of this video. I'm also trying higher resolution. And um, I'd be doing more, except I want to capture an event which I'll show you in this current gathering process is over. The thing that made me start looking in this area when Dutch brought it up has um, resurfaced. It disappeared for about 10 days, a week or 10 days or so, although I have most of it here. I just don't go back as far as the original video, so I had to go back to the AVI and um, I'm just pasting this in on the front. But in the meantime, as soon as this is over, I'll come back and show you why I'm Okay, so that ended. Now, what I want to show you is... a series of beams coming from here, and a series of beams coming from here. And they just started up again a couple hours ago. I think, although I have crashed and so there's a lack of continuity to some extent there. And this may be too far back. I may run into my next download. I find this tremendously interesting down here. And there's a bunch of ways and levels of detail we can look at this. But this will show you the same type of behavior that's very odd. And although there's a lot of beams coming out of here and here, you'll notice that the ones coming out of here are really different. Now, for anyone interested, I'm up to a hundredth buoy. I'm up to a hundredth of a second. I'm going to pause this and come back. Okay, that ended, so we'll sneak a little more time in here. Now, what I'm interested in is a beam that comes parallel to this usually and another one out of here that crisscrosses and it only just began again now in order to make this particular video I'm gonna have to use a lot of processing power and I'm just gonna hope I can do that well that was the beam but one isn't really exciting. 
it's when they start crisscrossing that it gets puzzling, arouses curiosity. And I was delighted they started up again, although I don't know if that's appropriate right there. And there it goes again. Okay, so right at the end, if I sneak it back, what if I just go back frame at a time? Look at that. the second one. There. more of them too if I'd come back just a little bit further. I'm also real intrigued by this. This is a, a structure that's persistently in here now and I'm wondering if it isn't perhaps along a fault line or the edge of a valley, a topography. I have to look further. There's also a tremendous amount of new activity down here in this corner, both shooting down and out. And I also realized that there's beams, the type of beams, not this type that we just saw here, but beams that are shooting out into the ocean, which makes me more suspicious than ever now that they're coming in especially the ones that come in at at uh, 1 o'clock and 11 o'clock. But since they're going out into the ocean and up in Maine, they go out into the ocean also. I don't see what else they could be communicating with. Uh, and there are other ways we can look at this. Okay, another quick look in velocity. But those are not... Those are the beams I thought were communication or suspected they were. Now that was a different kind of band and it was in a different color frequency. Look at that. That's way down here. It's an extreme it's on the edge of, and so for three frames, it's as though it's sweeping. Here's another view from that upper station. And again, it's in this frequency range. Back to the same next ride station, and again in different, same picture, different frequencies, but then 
Look how fast that little son of a gun changes. And then it'll pop out a what I always thought was a communication link. But if it's doing that over the Pacific Ocean and if it's doing that over the Atlantic Ocean, and I've seen them sweep too. So I'm just collecting data. I've decided I have no idea what. Okay, this is the last view. I've slowed it down, hoping I can just step through it. Whatever's going on there, I want to watch and see what's going on. So, a couple people have asked for um, custom videos. I'm going to try to do that too. And again, my problem is that when I'm making the videos with this program, I can't also be collecting the data. So, uh, wish me luck and I'll try to provide the data that we all need. And that's my new watch puppy. Stand up and be counted. Courage. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to take all of the data. Let's see where I am here. In timing. A thousandth of a second between frames. I think that's all I can afford. We'll test this first. Okay, this is a... I have varying degrees of resolution. This shows the United States. That seems quite obvious. I can come down into smaller areas and in doing so I will go to Nevada. This should show this area. It also shows the Southern California interesting changes. And it shows here. I think then I can come into states and look at both Southern California Southeast California, and where the heck did someone like me put Nevada? I could have been a little more organized. But there's so much data here. There's literally millions of pictures. That, oh, here, Nevada. And so between that Nevada and that California, I can show quite a bit. And then I can go into velocity. And in this case, I've got all of them. And this should be reasonably easy because I did them alphabetically by state. And so, the California, they're slightly different. And I get them from two sources, and I did it so that things can't be um, censored after the fact. So, I'm going to begin here. No, that's not where I'm going to begin. I'm going to begin here. Uh, so, I got reflectivity and I have velocity, and they're all next rad radar. Uh, although that isn't necessarily correct because I have seen squares as well as circles, but mostly I'm interested in torsion, and I'm interested in the internodal communication, which I think I've discovered here. But to begin with, I want to concentrate on the regional areas and so I'm 
just going to collect this to see how much data I can do in this super high resolution uh, and then get it up to YouTube that way. So we're down here at the uh, 27th of July and we're cracking through. I live right about here, two blocks from the lake. So I was mostly interested in coming across here to Duluth and then La Crosse, Minneapolis, Milwaukee, Green Bay, up here in Upper Michigan, the middle of Michigan, the bottom of Michigan, and Chicago, because all of those saw each other. And I think I can prove that they're t the stations are talking to each other. This here is a new phenomenon. And then this becomes a new phenomenon down here, too. Um, but I'm kind of guessing that these plumes may have to do with energy beams. There's two different types. One I call cosmic bullets. One appear to be internodal communication channels of some sort. there are some skips in the data happens when my computer crashes otherwise these are five minutes apart and it was the best I can do even with my dual core processor and multiple terabytes of data inside the machine and much more than that on my desk However, I don't, here we are, oh, right at the end. This is where it starts getting interesting. Okay, now I'm going to go down one more level to here and show you the whole movie of that. start with beams. We're back here on the 27th of July again. And this is about when the beams began. It's also when the venting began. The cosmic bullets came across. There is the beam. Cosmic bullets are, that's not a cosmic bullet, that's a beam. And it looks to me like it's a phaser cannon type of thing, but I speak of that in other videos too. I can't tell if it's heading to or from the device. I've come up with ways that it could be either. I'd like an expert now. That's interesting because the cosmic bullets went the other way. And I'm on the 30th of July now. So I'm trying to decide if those are coming from space, from satellites. If so, a geostationary 22,000 mile high satellite or a lower one. I think I can predict it. Here you can start to see circles. But you see that beam coming out. It's hitting this area here. And oh, and here we are down here with the beginning of these patterns, which Dutch detected almost as fast as they happened. In fact, I've been watching him since he first started talking about DB dead animals and harp. And I 
like the man's logic, he knows how to think. And those that criticize him are idiots because in the name of science they have blind passion and thus they can't be scientists. Okay, so next I want to go to and the problem is when I started here I was going across the United States so I don't have these in every area. In fact, I probably added a few to help. And so I'll take this entire and my hope is that if I do this in high enough resolution, people can come and grab any image they want. Look at the time stamp. Look at these energy beings and see and vector them off and figure out if one is aiming towards another. So we're at July 31. a little bit fast. It's interesting right now that we have a beam for the first time going this way, which I've never seen before. Um, I think I also, <laughs> yeah, grab that one too. One, I don't know how to synchronize the audio and the video. For some reason, they don't dance at the same beat. The other problem is I can put a greater number of pauses between them. And this again, this will, I think I have a, a lot because I took it as one of the corners of the United States. And this will show you that these current circular rings is reasonably new. This is back to the 24th of July. So they were always playing games, but not like going across the country from Seattle through Billings and the Air Force Base up there, North and South Dakota, into Duluth, into Green Bay, Upper Michigan, Milwaukee, La Crosse, all the way down to St. Louis, and then I tracked it up the Ohio Valley. So that was my main interest initially. And so these different areas have varying degrees of data, but they all end at the same place. And I can see patterns when they all stop and I see an energy beam coming between two stations, say across Lake Michigan to Milwaukee and from Milwaukee kind of thing. So there's a lot here and I don't know how to make these yet, but this is a reasonable way to start just to see what kind of quality I can get on this minimal size video in AVI format and then I'll play with what I can do in the way of super high resolution output. It looks to me like I can put out 25 frames per second, which with a thousandth of a second between each image, 
might give you the ability to... Now we're starting to get into those frames. And it's, um... Would that be August 2? of the computers is he which I suppose only lengthens the movie but it's amazing how fast they can change colors and I don't know what they are now, this may be one of the most interesting areas and again I'm I'm totally comprehensive here I've taken them all and I think these come out of DuPage I can. So, California. Arizona. California. Now, most of these are not full, so I might as well do them all completely. Now, these are interesting because they do seem to show torsion. They, this is velocity at the highest precision and those beams that come in or out do seem to turn this phenomena on or off oh I have this idea if I, if I pause and turn it back on maybe I'll sync back my audio and my video so when this one's done I'll give that a try and see if we sync back up because we're probably not synced something funny about this jerky back and forth thing and uh, this actually may be uh, real time censorship of me but in that regard I'm treated with great care in a special manner they bounce me around the world so they have time to edit what I see and do which I, oh, time to pause. Well, I think I'll wait a while and let things catch up and then. So, maybe at the end of this I'll give a demonstration of how one decides if you're being bounced around the world through black hole routers and tar pits. Okay, pause for a while. Okay, back from a pause, and I'm going to just continue coming across California, and and by the way, I'm using a product that I highly recommend. It supports a ham radio club. It's basically made to study the sun for the prediction of good ham radio and thus the analysis of the ionosphere. So I built it up to deal with earthquakes and weather now too. And I think I'm pushing the poor puppy to an extreme which maybe others haven't done and I probably did some things wrong. So I shall contact the person that I dealt with to get it and ask him if he can help me help us. Do some things that are limiting. And there may be a far more intelligent way to do this. I'm going to 
applause you can. Oops, not quite, I'm not done. Now, since this has happened before, and my computer stickometer doesn't show anything, I have to wonder what was happening there. Although I have turned off all internet traffic, so it may have been that this program was trying to do one of its 500 picture pickup tasks. And it quits one at a time. Oh, done going to pause for a second and see if we can keep it synced that way. Okay, next. And I wish I knew where I was in California better, but I don't. these were really boring as compared to Billings, Bismarck, um, Duluth, Michigan, St. Louis with its constant beams and variable beams. Jacksonville did the same thing. Which is why when Reno started blasting with a phaser cannon. I wondered if it couldn't be due to something related to steam coming out of dead volcanoes. I find it interesting that you can see data in the lack of data. I went originally looking at this data when there was no weather. Now, when there is weather, I see that these beams that we can see in various colors at, on the same screen, they change. So those black ones are at an extreme. Um, but I'll also see just a total negation of the data shown on the radar screen. So when the clouds come through, you'll see a patch through the clouds, which I don't believe really are there. Also, most of those flashes you see, it's rare to have them span two frames, which means they happen in a five minute interval. Now, it's conceivable that that five minute interval is like an open exposure, but I doubt it. And therefore, how many are there really? If that's in a tenth of a second every five minutes, then there's a tremendous number of those beams. And another pause. One more from California, and then I'll look for Nevada, and I'll pop up into Boy, I hate it when my computer is busy and I'm not using it. It makes me wonder who is and to what purpose.
working two possibility theory on what those beams are. They get wider as they leave the center. And I see two possibilities. They're coming from space, essentially over the shoulder of a satellite looking down. And therefore they're fat because they're close to the satellite and as they get down to the station they're further away and look thinner. The other is a typical first impression that it's a non-focused, non-laser light beam that actually spreads out miles wide. And the truth is it may be both. We'll pause and then pop over to Nirvana. Okay, Nirvana, now there's not too many here. It looks like there's only three next ride stations in Nevada. So, this first cuts. May be comprehensive in these two. Oh, with nice, pretty colors. Now, these things, I see Jacob's Ladder type effects in there. Nice those beams is pretty sweet too, but and surprisingly enough, this is interesting data, but it's atypical. It's not what, what I was seeing across the top of the country from Seattle to my Great Lakes, Michigan, and Superior, and then down to St. Louis. But I'm convinced I found something quite interesting, so I've been working on it hard. Unfortunately, I had to stop doing what I was doing, which consumed 100% of my computer processing horsepower and bandwidth. And um, then I kept making this project bigger, and for which I'm very thankful. But anxious to get this archived up on the internet, and hopefully others will grab a hold of it and help me do some serious research. On these frames, it seems to me I can prove that every single other one is reproduced. However, I don't really see an advantage in doing that to me. I can prove they have the technology and the transport around the world for me to get this data gives them the time and options to do what they want. Um, but it doesn't seem logical that every other one would just go forward, back one, forward, two, back one, forward, two, back one. Although these are jerky in nature, and if you step through them frame by frame, which this can also do. So if people want to tell me, I want to see that one little area at that one little time. Uh, um. Okay, well, I pause there while my apparent tachometer. See, 
how many of these things have a beam coming out in the last frame I captured before I turned off the internet connection. I, I don't know if any of you noticed that, but that is not a coincidence. It happens on a regular basis. And again, if these are frames that are taken five minutes apart, um, what are the odds that you catch a beam at all? need to go and capture all of the next ride stations from that first set of sources I was showing in reflectivity. But it would mean another week of collecting data full time. And I'd be up to about 700 images an hour with maybe 400 every five minutes, which takes more than a minute to bring in, so I do lose some synchronization by adding data. If I wanted to specialize, um, and again, this is new. Today is the first day I saw these going this way, but see how wide that is? That's got to be miles. But if it's coming past a satellite down to Earth, <coughs> it would look like that. If it's going to another Nexrad station, it could look like that too. But I dealt with Gigabeam. And Gigabeam could go, I think it was five miles with a super high speed laser light beam. I was going to put them over the rooftops of Manhattan for internet too. And um, at the end of five miles, I think the beam was the size of a silver dollar. And maybe that's what this is. I don't know, maybe that's five miles. Five miles has got to be way in there. Okay, Paul. Okay, I think I'm going to do these two because I can show three different types of view. One is called visual, one is called until I see a beam. I saw a beam. Now these are five minutes apart. And that is a beam, in my opinion, but it's not a normal one. And I didn't see there is a beam. And so that's one frame, and it's gone. Now I'll look for another. Okay, I just popped up to Duluth because I know this area a little bit better. And we'll see. 
start off here because there's virtually nothing, which is a good way to start now. That's how quickly I'm backing up one frame at a time. One beam. A little bit ragged. They changed color too. Okay, that's one of the unusual ones that lasts two frames. But actually, it moved a little. So is it tracking a satellite or aiming at something else? Let's continue to move forward. I'm fascinated about how these things start a torsion. They have a radial effect and they have a torsion effect. And now it's coming through our storms. And that, by the way, could be the reason we see rings. The stuff that I'm more interested in, I think, is just the ionization of the air put into a vortex that creates this stuff, which is clouds. But I'm really, oh, and this is the Jacob's Ladder effect that I'm so intrigued with, because those things have a tendency to, well, they're affected by the lake perimeter, um, but they have a tendency to slide around without respect to the wind direction, and they also can act almost as though to precipitate a real cloud eventually. Another, see how fast these things can change, and those flashes, oh, you bugger. That's something I have to ask Tom how to overcome. A beam comes in, it turns it on. A beam can come in and turn it off. Now, that other beam, oh, and that was some, that was pretty. Oh, and it was right at the end, too. Good. That makes it easy to find. Look at the stratification in there. This isn't the best example, but nonetheless, it's a pretty one. And if I hadn't been trying to make this report, we would have seen what this turned into, which is why I'm going to call this quits and see what we've built. I wish me luck. <laughs> 